In this video, we'll try to connect the things we've learned in the previous videos to the abstract task of classification that we already know. And we'll focus on building probabilistic classifiers. These are classifiers that return not just a single class for a given instance x or a ranking, but a probability over all classes. This can be very useful. We can, for instance, use the probability to extract a ranking and plot an ROC curve. Or we can use the probabilities to assess how certain the classifier is. And of course, if we don't want the probabilities, we can just turn it into a regular classifier by picking the class with the highest probability. The notation is as follows. We will look at each instance in our data as a random variable numbered x1, x2, x3. And each of these instances, we assume, will be drawn from the same distribution. Associated with each instance is a random variable y, whose values are the possible classes. And for now, we will stick primarily with binary classification problems, so that y can take the values positive and negative. A probabilistic classifier, in this case, gives us a conditional probability that the class, for instance, takes the value positive given a particular instance x. We can try to learn this function directly. That is, we learn a function from the instance space x to a probability vector on the classes, and we interpret that function as a conditional probability. This gives us what is called a discriminative classifier. We'll look at that in the next video. In this video, we'll look at an alternative approach called a generative classifier. Here, we don't learn the probability of the class given the instance directly, but we instead turn it around using Bayes' theorem, and we learn the probability of the data given the class together with a prior probability on the class. There are a few different approaches to learning generative classifiers which we will give the following names. The base optimal classifier marginalizes over all classifiers in a model class. This is a kind of provably optimal model, but it's usually too expensive to compute, and we won't discuss it in this course. But it's important to know that it exists and that it means something else than these other Bayesian classifiers. The general base classifier is one that learns a single distribution for the data given the class, this is a reasonable approach for low-dimensional data. For high-dimensional data, for high-dimensional data, we often make the additional assumption that the features are independent, conditional on the class. This is what's called a naive Bayes classifier. This is simple, cheap, and effective for high-dimensional data. We'll start with the regular Bayes classifier. The probability that we're interested in is the probability of seeing a particular class value given a particular instance. We apply Bayes' rule, and we rewrite the denominator, as we did in the last video, as this explicit sum. And we see here that if we have these two terms in the denominator, then putting one of them in the numerator gives us the probability that we're interested in. So with this, we fit a model to the conditional of the data given the class and to the prior on the class. And when we combine those two, and by combining those two, we can compute our class probabilities. So here's the algorithm for a simple Bayes classifier. We choose some model class, some probability distribution, to represent our conditional probability of the data given the class. This could, for instance, be a multivariate normal distribution. We fit one of them to all the positive points, which will give us a probability distribution or a probability density on our feature space. This we will take to be the distribution on the data conditional on the class positive, and we will do the same for all negative points. We fit a different multivariate normal distribution to all the negative points in our class. Then we estimate the class prior from the class frequencies in the training data, or we use domain-specific information. Then we compute these terms we saw on the previous slide, the probability of the data given the class times the prior probability of the class. We do that both for the positive and the negative class, calling these t pos and t neg. And using these values, we can easily compute the class probabilities. Here's what that looks like if we do it using multivariate normal distributions. On the left, we see a simple classification task with two classes. And on the right, we see two multivariate normal distributions represented by ellipses that are fit to these point clouds. The blue distribution is fit to the pluses, 
and the black distribution is fit to the open circles. And the red line is the resultant decision boundary. This is the set of points for which we are ambivalent between the two classes. In the case of the probabilistic classifier, the set of points for which the class distribution is 50-50. For relatively low dimensional data, this works very well. But as the data grows in dimensionality, the number of points we need to accurately fit a multivariate normal distribution grows exponentially. So when the data is very high in dimension, we often make an additional assumption, the naive Bayes assumption. This is the assumption that all features are independent, conditional on the class. Note that we do not assume that the features are independent. It's perfectly possible for one feature to be dependent on another feature, but they are conditionally independent. Informally, the dependency between the features is caused by the class and nothing else, just like Alice and Bob in the first video, where their lateness had only one possible shared cause, the monster, and once we'd isolated that, their lateness was independent. We will illustrate how Naive Bayes works in detail with the following example. We have binary features. The task is spam classification of emails, and we have two binary features. The first indicates whether the word pill occurs in the email, and the second indicates whether the word meeting occurs in the email. We have some data here, and we will build a naive base classifier for this data by simply fitting a Bernoulli distribution to each feature. That is, we will estimate the probability that pill occurs in the email given that its class is spam as the relative frequency with which the pill feature was true for spam emails. Here's what that looks like. For the data distribution conditional on the class ham and the first feature, we simply count the number of occurrences of the value true over all the ham instances, which gives us a relative frequency of 2 over 6. This is what we'll use as our estimate for the probability that a given ham email contains the word pill. Likewise, for the value false of this feature, there are four false values among these six emails. So the probability of seeing an email that doesn't contain the word pill given that it's ham is 4 over 6. And we do the same thing for the spam emails, where we estimate the probability of seeing the word pill with 3 over 5, and the probability of not seeing that word with 2 over 5. And here's what the naive Bayes assumption looks like in symbolic terms. We know that the probability of the class given the data is proportional to the probability of the data given the class times the class prior. And with the naive Bayes assumption, we can break this probability of the data given the class into a set of n factors, which we can each estimate independently. So here's an example. We start with the data set on the left, and we observe a new instance, an email that contains both the word pill and the word meeting. We're interested in the probability of the class conditional on observing this instance. For instance, the probability that the class is ham given that we've observed these two features. And we know that this is proportional to the probability of seeing these features conditional on the class ham times the prior probability of the class ham. And as we've seen in previous slides, working out this term on the right of the prop2 symbol for all the different classes allows us to work out the different class probabilities. The naive Bayes assumption allows us to separate the factor into different independent factors for each of the features, which looks like this. And each of these features we can then simply estimate from the data by filling in their relative frequencies. So the probability that the first feature is true given that the class is ham is 2 over 6. The probability that the second feature is true given that the class is ham is 5 over 6. And the class prior is 6 over 11, because there are 11 emails in the data set and 6 of them are ham emails. Now this works very well, but there is one problem that can occur. If there is a particular observation that doesn't occur in our data, for instance, the probability of seeing the first feature being false, given that the class is spam, then we will estimate its probability as zero. And since our estimate of the class probability conditional on the data works out as this long product, if one of the factors in that product is zero, the whole thing is zero. Even if all the other features gave this class a very high probability, that information is lost simply because one of the features ends up with a probability of zero. 
To solve this problem, we can smooth our estimate of the probabilities in such a way, in such a way that zero probabilities do not occur. And the simplest way of doing this is by adding pseudo observations to our data. For each possible value, we simply add an instance where all the features have that value. We do this for the spam class and for the ham class. And with that, our estimator for the probability of the data given the class automatically becomes smoothed. So where before we simply divided the frequency of a particular observation by the total number of observations, we now add one to that frequency in the numerator everywhere, and we correct the denominator by adding v, the number of possible values that this feature can take. In practice, especially with small data, we don't actually add one, but we reduce the weight of the pseudo observations. So for instance, if we give each pseudo observation a weight of 0.01, then the value in the numerator would not be one, but 0.001, and the value added to the denominator would be 0.001 times v. So what have we seen so far? One of the most important things that we recapped about probability theory was the difference between Bayesian and frequentist learning, but also the fact that we emphasize that we can use what works for us and even mix and match if necessary. We've looked at the difference between discriminative and generative classification, and we've seen some examples of generative classifiers, specifically a Bayesian classifier and a naive Bayesian classifier. The naive Bayesian classifier, we've learned, is one that assumes independent features conditional on the class. And we've looked at Laplace smoothing, a way to add pseudo-observations to avoid getting zero probabilities that screw up the estimates of our probabilities. In the next video, we'll look at one of the most famous discriminative classification methods, logistic regression.